Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. by the First Amendment. It's your right to speak out, to say something. So you can bring us a tape on any subject and we have to play it. We can put it on at midnight, we have those. Where's the bridge, Captain Clark? And where is the moon? It's in the half done, it's in the half done, it's half done. If you were to walk in off the street, you might think that this had been the workshop of some extraordinarily messy cabinet maker who specialized in making garish, multicolored furniture. In fact, I'm in Jackson Pollock's studio in the village of Springs on the east end of Long Island. Pollock was to painting what Mike Tyson is to boxing, raw, possessed, totally committed to his art. As you walk across this floor, you can still feel his energy burning through the soles of your feet. The East End of Long Island has always been the home of painters and artists, ever since Thomas Moran and a group of colleagues from the Tile Club, an informal association of painters in New York, came out in the 19th century to do here what Claude Monet and James Whistler were doing in Europe, explore the interaction of light and form at the point where water and land meet. They came here to Long Island because it was cheap and quiet, because of the ocean and the light, a light that de Kooning once compared to the light in Holland. After the war, the East End became the reactor core of modern art. Picardia was here, so was Max Ernst and Robert Motherwell. The style of painting known as abstract expressionism, which Pollock made absolutely his own, became an East End speciality as typical as grilled bluefish or August corn. On the heels of the artists came society. The east end of Long Island quickly became the watering place of the rich. Here, house building has always been about the conspicuous display of wealth. Big bucks turned into bricks and beams. Here it's not just a question of keeping up with the Joneses, or today the Billy Joneses, but of outdoing them. fringes of all this million dollar real estate between the town dump and folks, the garbage disposal company, is LTV. The setting may leave a lot to be desired, but there's nothing tacky about this public access television station. Week for week it delivers what it sets out to deliver. Television for the people, by the people. Hunt who has been here when the East End show was at 7.30 in the morning, and it went Monday and Friday. And we used to be able to do anything we wanted because we knew no one was watching. Uh, and Hugh King, our uh, guest, will also be appearing this summer. Uh, in, the in the five years of its existence, LTV has made over 7,000 tapes. This tape is tape number 7,034. Together, these tapes constitute an extraordinary archive of this community.
The films LTV has in its archive range from the local to the global. Altering the composition of the Earth's atmosphere, depleting the numbers and varieties of other species upon whose survival we, in the end, depend. It is not simply wrong, it is a piece of stupidity. LTV can put on the air a world-famous writer like Lewis Thomas, here reminding us how fragile our environment is. Assume that we can simply take over the earth as though it were part farm, part park, and part zoo, and domesticate it, and still survive ourselves as a species. It also makes it possible for local people to share and record their knowledge and skills with the community they live in. Oh, ever since we were children. And our family has got a history in fishing and trapping that goes back to the 1600s, particularly on one side of our family, the Miller side. It's the way they've been fishing ever since the very early colonial days. And on the other side of our family, the Lester side, we've been fishing in the family since oh, the middle 1700s, and we've been trapping. Not all of the films made at LTV are good. But then again, our lives are full of outtakes and bloopers. I don't know. I'm not really well, sure. But uh, our, Roger, Roger our technical it, right? man, again, we are Why don't we out of mercy to the caller, why don't you, you just, give me the phone okay. and I'll put him through my mic and we'll, we'll see if okay. this question can All right, caller, are you going to be speaking with Tony right here? Okay. Uh, hi there. We're, we're improvising. Okay, hold on a second. I'm going to put my mic to the ear and you're going to ask your question, okay? Good. LTV doesn't pretend to be slick ratings television. This is hands-on television for anyone. My guest this evening, he'll soon be here in a few minutes, I am sure, is the Reverend Walsh Jackson. And he's from the Calvary Baptist Church. He been the pastor for about 17 years. But up until that time, I am sure that he'll be walking in in a few minutes. I would like and to when thank things don't work Jack, out do quite as war? well as they should, well, that know. can have its own charm yeah, too. What would you do if you were in President Bush's position? Okay. It isn't easy to make television. Would you have gone to work? No. You were in his position? Take three. It isn't easy to make television. We start the day school gets out. Don't like that either. It isn't easy to make television. As I discovered. community of farmers and fishermen. Where's the bridge hat and glove? And where is the booze? It's in the half down. East Hampton, South Hampton. East Hampton is an unusual place. It's only two and a half hours from Columbus Avenue, but in the woods there are deer or raccoons. On the sound you can find ospreys nesting. It's also home to two very different kinds of communities. There's a well-established community of fishermen and farmers, but when the winter fogs begin to clear and the surf warms up, it's also home to some of America's most illustrious sons and daughters. There can be few small towns in the world with more Pulitzer Prize winners, magnum photographers, best-selling authors and rock stars than this one. The list of writers who live here reads like a who's who of modern American letters. If a bomb landed on the East End, runs a local joke, most of New York's magazines and newspapers would go out of business. The co-founder and president of LTV is Fraser Doherty. The east end of Long Island is a fantastic place. There's no question about it. It's got the old and the new and the nouveau and the, and the not so nouveau, the old money and the new money. But, <coughs> um, and one of the things that we are desperately trying to stay conscious of is to, is to not 
zone in on 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 the rich and the wealthy, but to, uh, because it leaves out the the bonnikers and the fishermen and the farmers and what have you. And the day the day when Peter Jennings and Stuart Warple will sit down and have a Donnybrook or, or whatever or any kind of a discussion is is the day we're looking for. And that can happen and it should happen. Fraser Doherty, it could be said, runs one of the smallest television stations in America. But when he needs to, he can count on the support of someone like Peter Jennings, lead man from the biggest of America's television stations. But it's a good reminder, I think, for people who are here tonight, um, that having access to television and having access to a place where you can exchange ideas, having access to a place where you can disagree in more than 30 or 40 seconds or three or four minutes, is really terrific. And so. What other community could drum up entertainers of the caliber of Paul Simon or Billy Joel to front a local charity bank? But I think any time the community you know, comes together and, uh, <laughs> and decides that they're going to work as a community for any number of projects, I mean, it's not, I mean, I picked the lighthouse, but also there, there, there's uh, Billy Joel is doing something for the, for the Bay Man. There's, uh, There are no financial benefits involved for these people. It's simply their way of saying thank you for being here. But ultimately, that isn't what LTV is all about. It's not a television station for the rich and the famous for the Wall Street brokers who rent on Further Lane for a season, or the just-made-it Joes who fly out to the beach in their private planes. It's a television station for the people who live and work in this town. not know it, and they may not always make as much use of it as they could, but LTV is their television station. And that's the key to it, is that we can see what's going on in our own community quicker, or as quickly as CNN can bring us the stuff at Desert Shield. That's, that's important. In an age of information overkill and cultural amnesia, LTV's films are about remembering. Remembering what happened in a few small towns on the east coast of America in the last quarter of the 20th century. When they couldn't go climbing, they cut cordwood. Mm -hmm. And they sell the cordwood for, take it down down to the shore, and pull it in the pile, and then the boat would come over and get it, take it to Connecticut, and oh, really? sell the wood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was a big business in the wintertime. What other, were there any other businessmen in Springs? Any other, uh, was there a blacksmith in Springs? There was, yeah, there was stores and there was a blacksmith. And the old, old Charlie Parson was a, <clears throat> was a blacksmith and he was really a mechanic. Many of these films bear witness to a very different kind of place. A place that existed before Highway 27 brought Manhattan to Main Street and the beach became just another place to get a tan. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government against a redress of grievances. So wrote Alexander Hamilton and George Washington in the First Amendment to the Constitution of the United States in 1787. 
200 years on, it's easy to take those freedoms for granted. Take for granted the extraordinary fact that anyone, whether they're a Palestinian lobbying for support or a grandmother making a home movie, a fisherman or a gay rights activist can walk into LTV with a videotape and ask for it to be played. And I uh, have a very interesting guest that I believe you've all seen before on my show, Barbara Wright. I always say she's not related because I think people ought to know that. And uh, she is an expert with crystals and has brought fabulous... Sometimes it takes a person who grew up in a very different kind of society, a society where people couldn't assemble or petition their government for a redress of grievances to remind us of just how precious those freedoms are. So they, so they uh, had been released just prior to the Hungarian Revolution and I observed uh, not only the the entry of Soviet tanks into uh, into my homeland, but also the impact of the media and particularly the television media in getting that story out to the people. And of course, um, here in Long Island, we don't need to get into tanks to get uh, to, to get access to uh, to good public support and television. One of the problems with freedom, that, though, that is that it doesn't always look glamorous or exciting. Usually. It looks My like this. Of Lorna Rubinstein's common sense factor is that it's about as low as a snake's rear in a rut. And that is low. Public access television is all about accountability. It's where people can when see that those who hold power don't abuse it. Unless it's and those wet, who decide how public money should be spent don't embezzle it. This even more than a Senate hearing or a congressional debate is what democracy is ultimately all about. Max, your camera is cockeyed. LTV is the East End's electronic scrapbook, its visual memory bank. When archaeologists come to dig up this place in 5,000 years, they'll find here on Springs Fireplace Road an astonishing record of how this community lived, what moved it, what worried it or made it laugh or simply bored it to tears. Coming from the outside, where there's little public access television, I've been amazed to see how LTV works. I think the image I'll take with me is of one afternoon I came into the studio and found a school kid about this tall operating this great big camera. As a person twice her age read a short story live on the air. That seemed to be what public access television is all about making television available to anyone that wants to use it and demystifying the whole business of making television. In the five years of its existence, LTV has established itself as part of the life of this community. If it were to close, it would be a great loss for the East End of Long Island. But up until now, LTV has survived on a mixture of goodwill, improvisation, and the dedication of the people that run it, on a wing and a prayer, you might say. And in the long run, I suspect that isn't enough. There's marvelous material in the archives that needs professional editing. 
There are gaps in the equipment and the facilities that urgently need filling if LTV is to go on getting better. The local community seems to be doing its bit to help LTV survive, but it urgently needs more support from the town and from the cable company. They should be helping LTV to go on making television for the people of the East End, by the people of the East End. Because in the final end, they're making it for you. Eight to black.